Kevante is my oldest child. I had my son when I was 12 years old and I love him very dearly. I was so hurt from the thought of somebody doing something to my child. Not only that, but his own brother is the accuser. So it, it just broke my heart completely. It was a hard decision for me, but I had to call the police to protect my kids that I had at the time in the home and to try to protect Calvante at the same time and get him some help. When he went to, to jail, um, by the time I got down there, my son told me that the way that the detectives, you know, handled him, it was so rough to the point to where he just got tired and he basically wrote down what they were saying just so they would leave him alone. And I wasn't there in the interrogation room. I thought me or a lawyer had to be there. If Kevante fails this test, like, it would really crush me. And if he passes this test, it's still gonna crush me just to know that he was telling the truth. And for the past 10 years of our lives has been turned upside down. I wanna be able to have my children together. The past 10 years, I haven't been able to do that. I just really can't believe that I'm going through this. I really can't believe that for the past 10 years, that I can't even like live a, a normal life without having this in the back of my mind. Did Calvante do it or, or did he not do it? Um, I just need Steve help. When I was 16 years old, one of my relatives, they had came to my mom. I was accused of molesting one of my little brothers, but this is something that I would never in my life do. I just felt like, why is she trying to tear our family apart? My little brother was a baby, and I would never in my life would have went that far. I'm 16, and I was still a child myself. For my mother to believe my relatives over me, how I felt, I felt real bad, terrible, I believe that I'm, I'm getting accused of this because I'm gay, and it's not right. When my mother wound up calling the police on me, I was scared. I was in a little room, and like, it just like, they was forcing me to like, tell them that it doesn't happen, even though it didn't happen. Like I say, I would never in my life do nothing like that, but, and then they wound up putting a whole nother like, charge on me at the same time. Well, after I had did three years, basically, I had to get out, go register as a sex offender. Like, how it's affecting me, it's affecting me real bad because how people just look. It's just hard for me that I have to deal with it and like, I need the relationship back with my mother like the way it used to be. Like, I love my mother to death. Like, I would never hurt her. I would never do anything. I love my mother to the point that like, literally if she died, I wouldn't, I would not know what to really do because that's the only person that I have. I took this lie detector test today and I am gonna pass this test today. And I want my mother to know that I love her and I would never hurt her or anyone in my family. LaVonda, that's your son Calvante on the tape. How is your relationship with him now? We have a relationship and I try to keep a bond with him but it's nothing like how things were before as a family. Does it bother you that he's gay? No, not now. It did it when did, I first. It did at first, but now you accept him. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a relationship with Calvante now? Yes. Yeah, and is it a good one? It's a good one, but it's nothing like how it was before. Well, I mean, a lot has happened, you know, in the last 10 years. And I gotta imagine there's regrets and some maybe pent up frustration. 
Um, now he's here. He took the lie detector test. If he did it, a lot of people would say, well, he was a young man. He maybe did something uh, he didn't completely understand. But whatever the case, he was institutionalized, penalized, in prison for three years. He's paid his price. All right. But what if he comes here, takes a lie detector test, he passes, and for the last 10 years, his life's been blown up over a false accusation? That's going to just tap me up. Mama, I did not do this, so why would you really sit here and believe a relative over your son? I was 16 at it's the time, and you don't know how bad it hurts me. <laughs> but I have to go through this and have people watching me. It destroyed my life, and you cannot give... You cannot give 10 years of my life back. You can't do that. And I didn't do it, and I would never do nothing like that. That is disgusting. Um, why do you think that this accusation came out that you were accused of doing this to your little brother? Because I felt like how I really felt, like, because I was gay, and, like, family members, they, you know, I guess they was thinking in their mind, well, since he gay, yeah, he did it, or, you know, just looking at me crazy. Yeah. And sometimes people falsely think that because you're gay, you must be touching children, which is totally not true. And then I heard that you went back to jail because you failed to register. I did not know, like, all the way how it worked. Right. Until I got locked up, until I went back. And when I got out, I went back to the people. Right. But I had realized, like, I know what to do now, so I'm how not... How long, when they sent you back, how long did you do then? The first time I did eight months. <laughs> that's a long time. And that's not in a juvenile facility anymore, right? Mm -mm. You're with sex offenders, right? Was that tough? It was real tough. Cause I... Did you ever have any sexual contact with your brother? You answered no. You told the truth. <laughs> Then we asked him the second question. <laughs> Did you commit that sexual assault on your brother? Did you commit that sexual assault on your brother? You answered no. You did not tell the truth. How is what? that? What? I didn't do it, I'll be honest. All that, all that animosity and all that cussing. I didn't do it! I didn't do it! I didn't do I did not do it, Mama, and I'm telling you that. Hold on a second. I want to I wanna ask you, <laughs> uh, this, this is your firstborn son. <laughs> you had him when, when, when you weren't even a teenager yet. So, uh, you know, he's been in your life almost as long as you've been alive. He, he, he did something horrible, right? Uh, but he, he, <coughs> he was a child when he did it. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you either way. I'm asking you as a mother. Is but there... how can, how can he make that right, Steve? Mom, how did do it? How can, how can, how can he how make does he it make right? it right by never and doing he... anything like that again? My thing is, you did it. You did your time. You were punished. You have. And, and to a certain level, and he's by still being punished. Yes, as a sex he's offender. He's still being punished. Right. Yes. But knowing that your mother's saying, "Hey, you can't come in the house. You can't be around the other kids," but she's gonna have a relationship with you. <laughs> is that good enough? It's good enough, but I didn't do it. And I this won't. has been something that uh, both of you had to deal with for a long time, <laughs> and it sounds like you're gonna have to deal with it for the continued future. So good luck to you. Thanks for coming on the show. And uh, I I'm sorry we couldn't have better results for you. Thank you, Steve. Good luck to you, ma'am. <laughs>
<laughs> My name is Steve Wilkos and I'm an investigative talk show host with a law enforcement background. It was my life or his. My job is to get truth and justice for everyday people. Watch our videos now.